Should you wear masks? More and more experts are suggesting that COVID-19 is an airborne disease and that wearing a mask could help protect yourself and your community. New research from scientists at the University of Nebraska bolsters the hypothesis that COVID-19 is an airborne disease. According to the preprint study in Med Archive, the coronavirus may travel in tiny droplets for more than six feet, longer than the distance recommended by social distancing guidelines. Citing the authors, AFP reports the team measured virus contamination in hospital rooms by placing a cell phone-sized sampler at the foot of COVID patients' beds. The findings suggest patients may spread the virus by talking, breathing, and coughing, and the virus could stay in the air for hours. From 18 samples taken, researchers successfully cultured live coronaviruses out of three. Even though collecting live samples from the air is difficult, this means the viruses can survive in lingering droplets. Citing co-author Joshua Santarpia, AFP reports that the research likely means SARS-CoV-2 could transmit in micro droplets, which travel for longer distances than big droplets. In addition, micro droplet transmission would mean that health authorities should order the public to wear face masks. Remember, just because you can go without a mask doesn't mean you should. And yes, an organization we aren't allowed to criticize had said we plebes don't need masks. But Xi Jinping had those guys wrapped around his pinky finger from the start. So who are you gonna trust? The WHO could be downplaying the possibility that COVID-19 is an airborne disease. Here's why this is important. According to the New York Times, 239 scientists in 32 countries say the coronavirus is an airborne disease that can linger in tiny droplets to infect people indoors in a report dated July 4th. The New York Times states a scientific journal will publish the researchers' open letter in the coming days. According to WHO's guidelines, COVID spreads mainly by contact, and airborne transmission of the virus only happens during medical procedures that create aerosols. Yet, dissenting experts believe the virus could transmit via much smaller droplets that could carry the virus to longer distances. The implication of the study is that N95-rated face masks should be worn not just by medical professionals, but ordinary people going about their business indoors. The letter's co-signer, Lindsay Marr, told the New York Times that the WHO's guidelines are based on experiments at hospital rooms where good airflow and lower virus volumes prevailed. According to The Guardian, documented outbreaks at meatpacking plants suggest these studies underestimate the virus's ability to survive in typical indoor conditions. At the time of writing, the WHO continues to recommend saving surgical masks for medical workers and not the general public. The New York Times reports that the new study would mean institutions should use powerful air filters, virus-killing UV lights, and face masks to prevent indoor transmission. Referring to the agency's slowness in changing its guidelines, an unnamed WHO consultant told the Times, At the country level, a lot of WHO technical staff are scratching their heads. This is not giving us credibility. New research shows the coronavirus outbreak might have started a lot earlier than the Chinese government wants us to believe. Satellite imagery of vehicle traffic around hospitals in Wuhan suggests the coronavirus may have struck the city months before the outbreak was acknowledged, according to Harvard University researchers. The manuscript of the study has yet to be peer-reviewed. According to the paper, the team reviewed satellite traffic images at the parking lots of six hospitals in the autumn of 2019. The researchers found a surge in the number of parked cars after comparing the data to the same period in the previous year. At the Wuhan Tianyu Hospital, which is one of the city's largest, the team counted 285 cars and trucks. This traffic volume is viewed as a proxy for respiratory patient intake, and the count marked a 67% increase over 2018. Additionally, the team analyzed internet search terms in China and found an uptick in searches for the words cough and diarrhea. Naturally, the authorities in Beijing resisted the claims. The BBC cites officials as saying the study is absurd and based on sheer speculation. However, the researchers note that hospital traffic volumes have been used effectively as a proxy for detecting respiratory diseases in Latin America. So let's take a look at the raw data. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.